only scenario I see Bitcoin getting down that low, nine to ten thousand, would be as if the Nasdaq and the S and P. Hello, everyone. Amid a 7% decline in Bitcoin, the market is experiencing a rush of panic-driven withdrawals. As our distinguished guest, Gareth Soloway, has consistently cautioned about this very scenario, he now brings his insights to the forefront. In this video, Soloway conducts an in-depth analysis of the present Bitcoin and crypto market, scrutinizes the prevailing price action, and offers his short-term predictions. This is a must-watch presentation to safeguard your hard-earned investments. Join our community of forward thinkers, stay ahead of the crypto curve, and let's ride the blockchain wave together. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's make this journey to financial empowerment unforgettable. Bitcoin BTC $25,698 stayed near two-month lows at the August 18 Wall Street Open as markets came to terms with extreme liquidations. Data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and TradingView showed BTC price action tracking sideways after a single daily candle spawned 8% losses. The largest cryptocurrency saw a cascade of liquidations across derivatives markets, with these accounting for an outsized majority amid relatively slack spot selling. In Deribit, it is likely that a large account got wiped, considering the immense short liquidation that occurred together, Trading firm QCP Capital wrote in a market update sent to Telegram channel subscribers on August 18. QCP, like others, noted that the market reaction to the alleged trigger, a write-down of SpaceX's $373 million BTC holdings, appeared exaggerated. This brought back the 2021 and 2022 ghosts of Elan-driven tops and bottoms, and we certainly hope the market will not revert back to those times again. When you wake up, hold on, let me just switch the screens here, and you read a tweet like this, and the tweet's quite long, and it says, we flash through 28, and you'll walk us through the scenario, but when you get here, it goes, my thesis is, uh, my thesis for why Bitcoin could hit 9 to 10K is an overall risk sell-off. That's not what you want to hear after like a rough night, is to hear that Bitcoin can actually hit 9 to 10K. So walk me through your tweet, walk me through your thinking. Okay, so so listen, and the first off thing, I always want to preempt it with saying that overall, Bitcoin is going to be fine. Like to me, I am I'm just using it as a buying opportunity. As it comes lower, I'll just dollar cost average. So I think that's important to say first and foremost is that this isn't the end of Bitcoin. In fact, the more people that say it is, the more bullish I'll become. Um, look at when we were at thirty one thousand. There were so many bulls. I was I was made fun of endlessly for saying we weren't going to break out there. Um, and look at what happened because the crowd was on the wrong side. Now, the key here is this, is that the only scenario I see Bitcoin getting down that low, nine to 10,000, would be as if the NASDAQ and the S&P sell off back to October 2022 lows or lower. Aside from that, I don't actually see Bitcoin getting down there. Like there's no real other bearish scenarios for Bitcoin. That's the okay, only wait. one. It's a risk or credit event. Wait, so earlier on the show, we spoke, and I know you were live, so you probably didn't hear it, but... We spoke about Evergrande going into liquidation or into bankruptcy. We said that 70% of Chinese wealth is actually in property. This could be a contagion of all the property uh, developers in China. A contagion of the property developers in China could take down the Chinese banks, the lenders. Who are the lenders? The lenders are American banks and, and whatever else. Question is, do you think that this is the collapse of China and this could bring down the markets to, I mean, I don't remember when the last time China collapsed us, but it's, it's, a, it's a catastrophe. It, it is nasty in China. I do not think China is going to collapse, though. The, the positive that China has going for it versus what the U.S. has going for it is that they have deflation right now. Now, deflation is not good either, but what it does allow you to do is print a ton of money. Right. So they can come out and they can print and they will do this. And remember, they're different than the U.S. and most countries where their rule, whatever, whatever their leader wants to do, they're going to do. Right. So it, they don't have to worry about congressional approval. Or they don't have a Democrats like and the Republicans pulling left right. to right and, and, and like that, masquerading right? on, on TV and fighting for 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 women's rights and black rights in order to negotiate a debt ceiling limit. They, they, they just put the debt ceiling limit and do whatever the hell they want. They say print print five trillion done, you know, and we got the digital yuan now. We just have to click a button. 
Okay, so, so so you don't think you think they're going to do stimulus, and they actually have been in the market for the last couple of days buying and stuff like that, uh, and putting I, money. I think Monday morning when we wake up or when I wake up here, I would not be surprised if there's a massive stimulus um, unveiled in in China. Um, now as quickly again, as that, as quickly as that, Monday morning. Well, they don't. Yeah, I mean, they don't have to discuss with with Democrats and Republicans, like you said. <laughs> So this Bad. was a level, and and you know, being on spaces with you, we've talked. I've talked about this uh, with Scott as, and you, and so forth. We knew that this twenty, this upsloping trend line from down here was an epically big trend line, right? That has now broken. That's problematic. That makes the concern for maybe a retest of the lows a lot higher probability. The next level you're looking at is this low. Now, this low happened to be when that BlackRock ETF spot news hit, and the run up we got from that. So. This psychologically is going to be a big level for a lot of investors because a lot of investors bought with the concept that this approval is going to be the catalyst for the next bull run. If we get below that level, that's going to really shoot a lot of people in the foot and they're going to kind of question that narrative. I still think that the approval is going to come and I think it's going to be a great scenario for Bitcoin, but that break would be a big one. And that's at 25,000. If we go lower, let's say 25 does break. Where's the next stopping point? This low here which happened to be when Silicon Valley Bank failed and we had all those banks failing, right? And that created this huge run up in crypto as well or in, in Bitcoin. So that's another key level. As you go down each level that breaks, it basically opens the door like a magnet pulling the market to the next level. So really you can see now we're trading, we're starting to trade down on Bitcoin here. I wouldn't be surprised if we touch the 25K level probably within maybe even this weekend. Now in some, I think some exchanges you saw a bigger flush where it almost hit it already. I'm on bit, bit stamp right here. It didn't get that to that point per the chart, but I think that that probably will get tested. And then again, if you're a bull, you need that 25 to hold because if it doesn't, it opens the door to 20,000. Um, Garrett, I saw yeah. Bitcoin dominance break the trend, but actually to the, to the, to the downside. So I mean, if you call out the Bitcoin dominance chart, let me know what you think of you know, you, you, you had a thesis that um, dominance was probably going to go up. He has dominance and dominance is going down. Yeah, yeah, that was a big because because I think what you ended up happening is there was a lot of stops triggered and a lot of panic that hit Bitcoin. I mean, if you look at Bitcoin, it's held up so well in the alt scenario where the alts have been getting crushed. And then so this was almost like for a lot of investors that are relatively new, this was almost like a shock. Like, holy cow, you know, mm. Bitcoin's barely moved one percent a day. Now it's down 10 percent. This scares them. And so it creates this additional selling pressure. So at least in the short term, we're seeing the Bitcoin dominance come down. But I would say that I do expect it to rebound over time and start to gain traction again. What do you think of U.S. Treasury yields? Like the 10 year going up to to 4.3 percent, the, the, the two year going down to um, I mean, what, what, what's the thesis here? Like, do people not want U.S. debt anymore? Is it is, is that what they're telling us here? Yeah, it certainly means that people are a little bit more skeptical, right, of, of buying how much, you know, how much can they load up to as, as a country. We know Japan has is the biggest holder of U.S. treasuries out there. So so it certainly means that they're demanding a higher interest rate. It also tells you that the, the thought process was that inflation was very short term. We were going to get it down to 2% very quickly. Now the thesis is changing to say, okay, we're going to have inflation higher for longer. We're going to be stuck at three, three and a half percent, which means the long-term treasury yields have to go up to compensate for that. They weren't going up. Now, remember when the yield curve actually uninverts, that's where recessions usually come. It's not the inversion, which we've seen for the last six to 12 months. It's the uninversion. So what you're worried about is that the 10-year continues to go up meet the one year or the two year or the short term thing. And that's that's when the inversion happens. That's when I think that's when you'll start to see the recession or people start to recognize that we'll have a recession as well. Take me to stock markets quickly. So let's just quickly jump into stock markets, uh, NASDAQ, SPX. Uh, I mean, I guess all of this doesn't bode well for those. No, no, there's definitely long term. Remember, the, the higher the long term yields go, it gives people an alternative. And this is this is why, you know, you have this dividend yield on the S&P. It's at three, four percent. You know, once you start seeing treasuries and, and yields go above that, it gives people an alternative where, you know, yes, you can't make 20, 30 percent in the in the stock market. If you're in this, I mean, if you're in bonds, 
but it does give you the safety of having this high return without the risk of stocks collapsing. And so there's always a certain amount of money that's going to flow over to treasuries as the yields go higher because they say, you know what, this is too scary for me in the stock market. I'm going to move over. You can see we've come now well off of these highs. The next support on the S&P is going to be, well, the spiders here is around 431. But this is now a big sell off from the highs. You know, the yeah. narrative of, hey, we're going to new all time highs. It's a new bull market in stocks is now starting to take a hit. One thing I'll say is just notice this. This is the bigger picture. These, this parallel line from these highs to these lows. If we get down here, if you're in the bull camp that this is a new bull market, that has to hold. If this Four, 418, 20, 418, that's 418 is the level. Okay. Yeah, if that and, 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 and notice it's upsloping. So in a month, it'll be 422. You know, you have to kind of follow it per the upslope. But if that breaks, now we're heading back to October lows. So that's the line in the sand. Are you are you buying yet? Are you selling? Where what's which 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 trigger is your finger on? So so interestingly enough, I've been short at the highs and I was pretty heavily short. I've been inching out of some shorts, taking some profits off the table, and I'm actually inching into a few longs. Now, I picked up a couple. Uh, I picked up a little Matic. I picked a little. Wait, wait, very wait, small wait, position. wait. Stop the show. This is the first time in the history of our show that Gareth has actually said he's going long. OK, let's start again and tell me what did you just pick up? Because this is much bigger news than than we thought. Well, and, but please, but please, everyone understand I'm a swing trader. So I get a 10% bounce. I'm saying thank you very much. And I'm exiting the trade. But I mean, if we just go to Matic, right? So we have Matic coming down here. There's this, this low on, here me, and then this low here. So, so I start to nibble a little bit. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. So, so, you know, we're getting close to these lows. We're at this low here. We have a lot of support starting to come in here. So for me, it's just I start a position. Essentially, I put one, one and a half percent of my portfolio in it. If it comes down another 10 percent, I'll put another one and a half or so in. And I slowly accumulate because ultimately there's a lot of fear and we'll eventually get a, a snapback. Right. Eventually, this fear will we'll see a snapback. Once we get that snapback, I'm out. Right. So same thing I did this with. I actually did this with a few different ones. Cardano, Cardano, same kind of deal. I picked up a little bit on this flush. Um, same thing with Litecoin. I even added a little Litecoin today uh, or yesterday, in fact. And you can see Litecoin again, lots of support on Litecoin here. So, again, going to stocks. I mean, look at some of these stocks. Look at Square. I mean, look at, oh, look at the drop on this thing. I mean, it looks like a crypto chart. It looks like a small crypto chart. A lot, um, of, its, a lot of its revenue is actually from crypto, which is probably why it's getting punished probably right as well yeah exactly yeah. so so there are i mean there, there's a lot of stocks out there that have and again this is a very shorter term trading strategy but i like to see panic selling i buy panic selling when people calm down there's usually some short covering and some snapback and i just sell right into it and then same thing when everyone's saying long and i'm getting ripped on twitter i'm like oh this is a great signal i'm getting ripped it. on twitter i'm like you know counting my money already there because again it tells you that the top is in or likely close Remember to give us a thumbs up if you find our content valuable. Your support fuels our passion to keep delivering top-notch videos. And hey, why not spread the knowledge? Share our videos with your crypto-curious friends, family, and fellow enthusiasts. Thank you.